Alex, what beer are you drinking today? What's that? What beer are you drinking today? You tell me. Golden now. <laughs> Golden. So it's all colonial now. Oh no, it, it was for the last like three or four years now, isn't it? They bought it all about three years ago or something like that. Colonial. Oh, yeah. Correct. But um, yeah, they must have changed it all. Just their beers, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I just I've I've, I've only been here once before. I just tried this today, the colonial um, pale ale. It's pretty nice. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, they've done. They've cleaned it. They've done a lot of work to it. I know they've just renewed the whole, most of it. Well, definitely all this side. We did that about a year ago. Yeah. We don't get down here enough. Yeah. And uh, how's the view? View's great. Yeah. <laughs> and now, uh, why why has the music been such a success? Um, don't know. <laughs> I guess uh, it's a funny question coming. Like to, to answer for us, but I guess it's um, a lot of it's just hard work. Carol and I work, work very hard at um, what we do and um, what we try to deliver. But uh, I guess when you don't forget that the, the guest is king, then you know you just try you try your best every day and just try and um, cook and deliver for you for your guests and word of mouth I think was the it's the longest and hardest road to go down but it's it's the best it took us about a good 18 months two years to to get going and um, yeah it just uh, just had to rely on the word of mouth and get people back and, and um, look after them when they get there and um, I think a lot of people look at some of the successful or a place that's successful and just assume that they have something that other people don't have, and or that uh, it just came, you know, came from nothing. But was there like any, you know, heartbreak or any times where you thought it just wasn't going to work out? Yeah, there was. There was plenty of times. <laughs> There's plenty of times. Uh, more mentally than than financially. Finances were not great in the early days in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And you do worry about paying your suppliers and, and your staff and everything like that. Yeah. Yet you do have those moments. But uh, I think uh, being quiet and um, it's more mental. And it, it's, um, yeah, you got you ask yourself every day, is, it, is this going to happen? Is it going to take off? Is it, are we going to fizzle? <laughs> are we going to end up going working on the mines like everyone else? <laughs> or, or is this going to work? So I think you just got to back yourself and uh, trust what you do is right and uh, pull through it. And did you have that like, self-belief from the start? Or? Yeah. yeah. Like, we, we come back and... Um, from our travels and everything like that, and we didn't want to serve one course. Obviously, we're in a destination where it's not there's no foot traffic, or you know, we don't pick up any sort of walk-ins, or, or people don't walk by. It's in a suburban street, so it's yeah. We had to make a destination. We didn't want to serve one course, so we went with the sort of degustation type thing. It was a bit different to what it is today, but. Um, Still along the same lines, it was still five courses we started out, but it had choices and stuff like that. So we thought um, we'd give it six months. We survived, we're still open. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll reevaluate, and, and it worked from there. And a year later, it was still going, so we thought we'd. Um, take the choices out and things like that refine it make it longer so it all sort of just evolved yeah. and uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in cooking um, well to get started wasn't it was never really a, a choice I didn't really grow up wanting to be a chef or anything like that I actually wanted to be a cabinet maker and I'd done that for work experience at school and uh, I didn't like it so I wasn't really turning up to school much so I thought the beach was a much better idea so um, when I was 16 I, I with my parents I realized that I had to get a job now or, or you know I might not get one so I um, applied in the yellow pages or wrote down all the places that um, were in there all the restaurants and wrote it wrote around to see if I could get apprenticeship and um, the Greyhounds gave me apprenticeship so that's when it all started.
And uh, when, when you go to eat out yourself, what do you look for in a restaurant? A lot. Pretty easy, I reckon. Um, <laughs> I'm just happy to go out and let someone cook for me. <laughs> so, obviously it depends what where you go and what you're going to eat. Um, I... If, if I go for an expensive meal, then obviously a bit more critical than than going to your, your local. Going to a local, then you know, not worried at all. Just just happy, um, sitting there and enjoying the night. And that, I think that's what it's about. Just enjoying yourself and and um, you know, it's the the people you go with as well it has a lot to do with it. And you go out for a good night, and that, that's all it is. And uh, what's the best way to get started as a chef? Is there like a proper path to follow, or what do you recommend? Well, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I went the traditional route, that's for sure. I went um, classical, classical French training, and um, and built built on that, which uh, I lost well, because I did that way, and, and that's what I prefer. But you know, a lot of people these days want to skip all the classical, just dive straight into um, being the head chef or, and, and missing out all the basics, which which is so important, and it's what you build on and where your bases are. And uh, how long does it take to become really proficient in the kitchen? I guess it depends on attitude. It's a, a big thing, attitude's the, the, the biggest thing which I find where you know, people can adapt and, and I mean attitude and the common sense, you've got to have a lot of common sense to be in a kitchen. You can, but um, yeah, you can adapt quite well to new and different things if you, if you have the right attitude towards it. If you think that's there's only one way to do something and, and that's the only way. Um, which is fair enough, and I've worked with people, plenty of people like that. But you know, there's there's lots of different ways to do stuff, and you you've got to find out what works best for you in a lot of ways. And yeah, so I think a lot of it does actually come down to attitude. And if you had one secret to cooking good food, what would it be? One good secret. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what, what are some of the problems that young chefs are experiencing when they start out? And what's your advice to them? Um, walk before you run. <laughs> it takes time. And, um, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight, but I just put your head into it and work hard. And uh, with the industry in general, in Perth, what are some issues, or what's the biggest issue to think that's facing the industry? I think uh, we need more training, and um, w which we have done in the last uh, four or five years, a lot better operators, which is great, more professional, uh, younger, they've got a bit of life in them, and um, yeah, younger people open up restaurants, want to do the right thing, and oh, well, not just restaurants, but you know, bars and, and clubs and, and everything that's, um, that's picking it all up, but yeah, I think... Um, it's it just just the training and just well, obviously staff's quite hard yeah. because you know they can they can go up north and <laughs> get paid a mint or they can come and work beer for peanuts. Yeah. So obviously that's hard to deal with but at, at the end of the day I guess it rustles out the people that actually really want to do it and really want to learn and the people who just want to um, earn money. Well, do you think it's going to create a split in our Perth in the, in the um, chefs? Are you going to have your kind of old cooking chefs and your, your fine dining chefs? Do you think there's something like that along those lines that a split's going to form? Or? Yeah, definitely. I guess it's not just uh, fine dining. There's a lot of like um, sort of c cooler bohem sort of uh, establishments going up which are, are doing really good stuff but very rustic sort of style and yeah, th those sort of guys and yeah, but I think there's going to be quite a difference between the yeah the up north sort of sort of guys that are sort of sell out I guess in a lot of ways yeah um, and doing that sort of thing and the guys down here do, trying to trying to make a change and a difference. And uh, which chef has had the biggest influence on your cooking? Well, I've had a lot, a lot actually, but uh, there's there's quite a few that um, I've worked for. All, all the people that I've worked for have been massive in different ways. So, uh, Neil Jackson's um, 
a great a great man and a great mentor. So um, Elaine for uh, at the loose box, he's he's another one that was um, you know he was a hard man, but you know taught you a lot of discipline and, and he's and he's been a great support to us as well. And then there's people that work for in Melbourne, Philippe Michel, and in London Bjorn Vanhurst, which is you know been integral to to your training and, and what you do today. So yeah, it's a lot of different people. And are you reading any cookbooks at the moment? And what do you what do you recommend? Yeah, I had a look through uh, as uh, number eleven uh, Park Lane, David Hum. It's it's quite an interesting um, cookbook. There's uh, Mama Fuku's who's uh, uh, another pretty sort of interesting cookbook. Um, yeah, always looking modernist cuisine. It's different. It weighs 22 kilos, but uh, it, it, it's quite the cookbook as well. So yeah, it's a few on the go. And and do you find you get a lot of new ideas from cookbooks? You, is this something you do often? Or yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I guess you look um, more technique-wise than modern techniques that we that we work on than um, than things we do. There's a lot of you know as. The same former past chefs taught me, and there's a lot of things we do from there. But I'm looking more technique-based stuff to change um, all the stuff, the stuff that I know, the combinations that I, I use, and stuff like that. Are usually pretty classically French, but we just find different ways of and technique-based and, and textures that we use to, to change it up a bit. And uh, how can people find out more about you or Restaurant Musée? Um, they can come and dine with us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just uh, come in, see what we do, and you know, it's not for everyone. But uh, you know, we, we hope that uh, people enjoy and enjoy the experience. Is there anything else you want to add? No, nah, 